Yeah. Okay. Good? Let's start. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Welcome to 42. Two souls, one journey. A raw and unedited look into our lives as humans based on the 21 grams experiment. A scientist by the name of Duncan McDougall in 1907 concluded that the human soul weighs 21 grams. On this podcast, we will explore that no matter what our lives look like on paper, we journey similarly. In this episode, we are speaking with the kindest, friendliest, and most honest person I've met, Curtis Boychako. Uh, you can correct me on that in a few seconds. Curtis is a newer friend in my life. We met about two years ago through friends, but our souls have connected very quickly, and we'll talk about this journey. Hi, Curtis. Awesome. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, yeah, very close with the Boyechko. I'm used to sp uh, spelling it after I... Uh, Someone sees my name, so I used to go boy. I'm a boy. Yeah. And then etch, uh, etch glass, I said, and then coke, I took commerce in university, and, and that was kind of my go-to explanation. <laughs> it's a great, again, what a nice guy way of doing it. <laughs> boy, like it's such a, you know, you made it kind and easy for people to follow, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Um, so how are you feeling today, Curtis? Good, good, yeah, it's Thursday, and um, yeah, it's been a good week. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited today. I've been thinking about it for a few days, well, a few weeks now. So uh, yeah, I'm very excited. This is fun. Yeah, I mean, I'm just let the users know, like today we are going to talk about our, it's a sort of a tribute to our grandmothers. Uh, both Curtis and I lost our grandmothers this year. Uh, both women were in their, in their mid, early 90s. So mine was 92, your grandma was? Mine was 92 as well. Oh, perfect, so 92. Um, and, you know, we, today on International Men's Day, we are honoring our matriarchs who <laughs> raised us and put us together. So it's really... the uh, kind of guys we are, you know, that we honor <laughs> our grandmas on Men's Day. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, like, for, like, when we met in Toronto, you know, like, I was like, oh my God, this guy is really kind and friendly. I was like, is that a real, like, is that real? Like, I'm so jaded Torontonian. I was like, this can't be real. Like, come on. This guy's way too kind. And then, like, in my journey to Winnipeg, Curtis has been so kind to sort of share, like, your travels across the city, across the country, sorry, and then all his favorite sweet spots in, in Winnipeg. And to I'm all the Torontonians... living through you. Yeah, well, I feel like I'm living through you. <laughs> like, you sort of... Your soul yeah. did the journey ahead of time so that mine could do it easier. Um, and to all the jaded Torontonians, this is real. Like, outside of <laughs> Toronto, people are this kind and nice. <laughs> and I'm excited that we get to experience this with Curtis. So, um, well, it's good to do like a, like a sampling tour of that because I grew up in Saskatchewan. Yes. And I, you know, then lived in Winnipeg for 10 years and I lived in Vancouver for six years. So I kind of knew the West. And so I'm a transplanted into Toronto. So it's interesting to get different perceptions of how, you know, what people are like in different areas of the country. <laughs> so, tell, so let's talk, I mean, before we get to the grandma, let's tell me about that. What's the most like, like I'm such a Toronto boy. I was born, like I wasn't born there, but I lived there for so many years of my life. That I don't know anything yeah. outside of that. Um, yeah. Tell me about like, so let's talk about, West Coast Canada and East Coast Canada, and, uh, the difference in people. Because I feel like when people talk about Canadians, they're like, oh, they're so kind and friendly. And I'm like, what? Like, as a Torontonian, yeah. I didn't always feel that. But that, yeah. like, being in Winnipeg now fully has shifted my, my perception of that. Now I can see why that stereotype exists. But why don't you tell me about. Well, you know, I, I get that question asked a lot. And I think, you know, sometimes it's hard to make broad statements and generalizations because I yeah. think it's what you make of it. And it's who the people, like if you kind of make an effort to kind of go into the weeds and get to meet people, you'll find all sorts of people in different areas of one city, that, let alone Vancouver versus Toronto. So, um, but yeah, no, I, I, there is a men prairie mentality. So I'm kind of smiling when you're talking about Winnipeg and what your experience has been because um, for Saskatchewan, one of the biggest jokes is like we always kind of ask three questions and you know that kevin bacon six degrees of separation you always kind of find out you knew someone somewhere you know so it's kind of funny how we gravitate to you know so and so you know yeah. so um so there is that prairie thing but um yeah so then when i went to vancouver um i did notice something different actually i noticed um 
everybody's having coffee and they're out, you know, it's in the middle of the day. And I'm thinking, is everyone trust fund babies here? Because does anyone work? <laughs> <laughs> and that might be true for Vancouver, actually. <laughs> not stereotyping, but, but there's just, it's very laid back. And, but what I also noticed was um, there was a bit of community on the prairies where everybody's like, hey, where are you going? What are you doing? Let's get together. Whereas well, I noticed people were a bit of lone wolves in Vancouver. People yeah. go out for a hike by themselves, go for a run by themselves. But it's a very individual thing and, and that's fine. But um, it just was a different way that I had seen things. So ironically, going from Vancouver to Toronto, I felt a lot of similarities to Toronto and the prairies because people would say, hi, open the door. How are you doing? And, and that's something I was used to on the prairies. So yeah, that's been my experience. Wow, that's so interesting because I feel like for, like I literally like the, the prairies community is so kind and so like you know like the biggest scare is the winters here but from you right. to everybody here has been like okay great you're here how can we make your stay your journey great right. and I'm like I don't talk to my neighbors in Toronto I live in a small yeah. building and it's like yeah. you know, people don't make eye contact there but here people are like the community is so concerned about or the, is invested in you they want you to come yeah. here they want you to make like it's such a warm feeling I feel like I'm like, did we ever have it in Toronto? Like, I don't get yeah. that at all in Toronto. Um, so it's so well, nice. To that point, too, like in Winnipeg, like I know you're living downtown Winnipeg. So, yes. you know, some things that happen is there was businesses where it shuts down after 6 p.m. and it can be a bit of a ghost town downtown. I don't know if you've noticed that. Uh, but We're in a pandemic. <laughs> and we notice that a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Exactly. So plus, plus, plus. Right. Um, I, when I lived in Winnipeg, I lived in the southern part, and it was in those bedroom communities where everybody drives into the garage, the door closes, people stay in their houses for the night. So there was a bit of um, um, oh. not as much community. Whereas I think in downtown Toronto, you know, people, a lot of people live and work downtown. So there's a lot of that vibe that you see in evenings and corner stores and whatever. So yeah, so each community has their own mosaic kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> so not to pick favorites, but which is your, which has been your favorite community so far? Like in Toronto? In or Canada? city in Canada? Yeah, let's just say city yeah. in Canada. Let's, let's get like, oh. let's cause some controversy. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, 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 I lived in Calgary for a year, and that's where I thought after going to university that maybe that would be where I would spend a lot of Saskatchewan people go to Alberta. Right. Um, so there's something about seeing the mountains and it's a very fit, um, people are skiing and hiking along the Bow Valley. And so um, I, I like that part of Calgary, but they have really weird weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Chinooks and, and snow in the summer. And, and But um, Vancouver, I love the ocean. So the seawall is beautiful. You know, that's, that's nice. Um, so yeah, you can see that I'm not going to pick a favorite. I'm bouncing no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have to say, I guess every city has their trouble. Like I, I spent months and I spent a month in Vancouver and like, it'd be one of those days where it was gray, gray, gray. And then like the yes. sun came out and then you're out like in a free pool swimming with the weather yeah. so nice. So like you're in the ocean swimming, looking at a mountain and it's all free and you're like, what the fuck? Like I fully understand this, right? And yeah. it's something you'd never get in Toronto, but also Toronto doesn't shut down at nine o'clock. You can go to a restaurant yeah. <laughs> till yes. five, six a.m. Yeah. in the morning. Um, yeah. You do right. It's it's tough. It is tough. Everybody to beats up Toronto. Like going back to Saskatchewan, everybody likes to beat up Toronto. It's sort of like you know <laughs> center of the universe kind of thing. But I find that um, yeah, like Toronto, there's a lot happening in Toronto, and you're close to like New York and big cities and such. So it's it's Chicago. You know, there's fun things like that. So. Yeah, um, you know what, I think the point is you make the most of where you are, and I, what I'm seeing you're doing in Winnipeg, you're, you're gonna mine Winnipeg as much as you can while you're there, so. <laughs> I think you gotta make the best of it, right? But I think that's the, I think that's the attitude, right? As, as nomadic people or people who are traveling, you wanna get in there, you wanna enjoy everything it has to offer, even if it's minus 50 winter. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's great. You just do the tunnels underneath, that's, that'll get you by. <laughs> right, right, I mean, that's where I have found the good coffee, it's in, cute businessmen yeah. so <laughs> there we go that's, there we go that's right good good um right, so, so today we're so let's go back to honoring our grandmothers um yes. let's so tell me about what was your grandmother's name um so it was so her born name was juliana and julie but she went by judy the most of her life and um yeah so um so yeah so uh, judy talbot was her name and uh um 
my grandpa's name was John, but his uh, his dad's name was also John. So, or actually, it was Arthur was his real name. Okay. But his grandpa, his dad's name was Arthur. So grandpa went by John. So it was John and Judy. So it was always J and J. That's so <laughs> great. How did it like? How did Juliana turn into Judy? What's what happened there? Yeah, I don't think my grandma liked the word Julie. Okay. Yeah. So so she kind of chose. She took power and uh, chose Judy. <laughs> I mean, Judy Garland, like I can't, you know, I can't oh. fault that gorgeous name. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> wait, so, was this your maternal, I guess this is your maternal grandmother then, not your paternal Maternal, yeah, yeah. So in small town Saskatchewan, um, Grayson, Saskatchewan, um, and it's just a small little village. And uh, there was a family of 12 living wow. in a two-room house. <laughs> it, was, it was very crowded. And um, they had one boy. And uh, so, yeah, so that was my grandma's life growing up. <laughs> wow. And how many kids did she have then? Like, so what's... So then my, um, so my grandma was in a family of 12. And um, when she met my grandfather, John. Oh, so um, she's one of 12 kids. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, um, so then my grandma had twins. So my mom is a twin. And okay. they're fraternal twins, so... Jim and Jeanette, the J's continue. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you might wonder where Curtis comes from. I asked that question. It was a book. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <Here> we <go. laughs> well, they like, I, I remember when like my siblings were like S, S, like my, my brother's S and S, yeah. I'm an S, my sister's an S. And then when our fourth sister came, we were like, fuck this shit, change the name. So maybe it's <laughs> that where they're like, too many J's, too many J's. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> so your grandma had two kids your two kids that's yes, it right that was so it how, well I'm, interesting story there and that yeah. um so my, my grandma was young when she had my mom as a twin and um and then my mom was young when she had me um so um my i was born and then my sister who's 14 months younger than me so we're close together uh we were kind of raised like twins um, but my grandma became pregnant the same time my mom was pregnant with my younger sister. So, yeah, so I could have had an aunt that was a year younger than me. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> but but it, it didn't happen. But, uh, yeah, but, but that would have been a kind of interesting twist in life. <laughs> so, but it was neat having young, a young grandparents. Yeah. I don't know how old was your grandma. Was, was she younger or older? <laughs> so she got married at, like, 13 or 14, I feel like. And so she's also one of... I'd say 10 or nine. Like, so she, and she's the mm -hmm. eldest of them. And so okay. her youngest sister is the same age as my dad. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah right. So yeah, that, like yeah, that yeah. happens. And uh, she, again, being the eldest of all those, of all the siblings, she was always like the mom figure. So no matter, like she was everyone's mom at that point. Um, yeah. So even when her yeah. sisters would come, uh, it was so it was great to sort of see them together. Cause I was like, um, I have this really great memory of my grandmother and like her second sister, who I'm going to call her favorite sister because <laughs> they would like sit together and giggle and like, yeah. it's the only time yeah. in my life when I saw them together, I was like, oh my God, that's your best friend. Like, yeah. you know, they would yeah. like, you could see them at, the, at, a, at a younger age because they were the yeah. two eldest and they probably had to yeah. endure like, <laughs> some of the siblings. Uh, right. But at the age, I think it was when my sister got married, so... Anyways, like 10 or 15 years ago, um, no, that sounds too far, but 10 years ago, and like just when they were together, they were making food, and I was like, oh, that's your bestie, like, and they were also, because there were so many, I think they were like eight months apart, or like, they were right. short, like they were probably twi raised as twins as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. nice. <laughs> do, you ever see, do you ever see your grandmother interact with any of her siblings? Yeah, yeah, there was, um, so with the... The group of 12 <laughs> um they kind of split into the younger group and the older group so um my grandma was part of the younger group and uh um and there was uh, one sister that lived in the same village uh, that, that my grandma was in so um that was neat and um you know up until two years ago there was six of them still alive and the ages were from 89 to 96. And I thought, this is amazing. And they were all, they all wrote letters and phone calls. And so they were very close that way. And, and, um, I've kept a lot of those letters that, um, oh. that were, she's kind of referenced all that. And, and, and then, um, my grandma just passed in September 
and um, I was going through some of her belongings and she kept all these letters and um, so yeah it was beautiful to see that you know and and something amazing when you see cursive handwriting um, their stories right it, it yeah. just pulls you in deeper <laughs> uh, oh that sounds so beautiful I feel like I can't wait for you to I don't know if you read all of them but for you to like go through them like it's, it's such a a, a capsule of history you get to keep right yeah yeah um, so I, I brought props for today <laughs> <gasps> god tell me show me props because i brought a prop as well <laughs> okay so this is my grandma's writing and this is a pillow with her grandchildren so i'm curtis on top okay and and so the funny so she had five grandchildren and the different days and and, and names but every time I went to visit her, if it was someone else's name on top, I would right size it to my name on top. So that was our little joke and we would laugh and giggle. So, um, but I thought, you know, this is kind of a, you know, we had a fun story about the pillow, but, um, you know, now to have the legacy of her handwriting there and a memory, I keep that with me. So. Yeah, I mean, you were clearly her cool. favorite because you got to keep it. Of course. It. Yeah. She kept it up top for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, so in my family, so I'm one of, uh, there's four, five, six of us. There's six yeah. grandkids. And I always pretend like I'm the favorite. I also pretend like I'm an only child, but like I always pretended like I was her favorite. And towards the end, I would crawl into her bed in the nursing home or in the house and like in the bed and, the, and just cuddle with her. Mm -hmm. And my siblings are like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm her favorite. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, question for you Do, do you know if others cuddled or had those connections with your grandma? No, I, you know, like, I think the great thing about grandmas is that each of us have a special relationship with them. So each of us, yeah. like, there's such a good way to make each of us feel like we're their favorite yeah. grandchild. You know, there's yeah. this, this is, somebody had said the same to me, when you're having a bad day, go to your grandmother because there's nobody in the world that loves you as much, mm -hmm. even your parents don't have that capacity because your grandparents somehow, like also you're mad at your parents because, you know, they didn't give you allowance or something and your grandparents give you everything. So there's something about that relationship <laughs> yeah. a grandchild has with their grandparent that each of us yeah. felt like we were her favorites. Yeah. I just verbally went out and told them that they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds like you're too nice to do that kind of stuff, Curtis. <laughs> well, uh, maybe I'm passive aggressive. I might have done it some other way. <laughs> yeah, just, just hold the pillow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the eldest of the five of the five cousins? I am. I am. Okay. Yeah, oh, then you yeah, of course yeah. like. Let's talk about patriarchy. Like, it makes sense. You're the first male yeah, born. You're her favorite. It's meant to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and all the pressures that come with it. <laughs> right, right. So let's talk about some, like, what, what did you feel were some of the pressures that came with it? Oh, well, um, I guess, you know, many of it was self-induced pressures. That was so, my two-part question. Right? Cause I was going to be like, do you yeah, believe yeah, that I she think... thought that? Okay, first, let's, yeah. I love that you said that. Yeah, so, yeah, no, so, yeah, so, you know, so I, I, um, both sides of my uh, family uh, grew up on farms and um, my dad was the first to have a high school grade 12 and then went to post-secondary so there was sort of that pressure that I would follow that as well and um, and um, yeah I, I, you know so there was expectation go to school go to university etc um, and then marriage as well, like um, there was no divorces or anything like that. And, um, and there was no one that was gay. I had no one, I didn't know what that was. So, um, so yeah, so that kind of was causing some um, angst, I guess, is when my, um, actually the person that I married, um, my grandma was born Catholic and then she married a Protestant and then became United. And um, kind of, her parents kind of, sort of disowned her because she crossed the floor from Catholic to Protestant. So then when my mom got married to Catholic, um, I was sort of bringing that back again. And then um, I then got married Protestant, United. <laughs> so I had this connection with my grandma. She knew both sides, the Catholic and the United side. But um, yeah, so, so yeah, there was little things sort of like, you know, I'm doing things differently or I'm doing things the way I'm supposed to be kind of thing. But um, But, you know, reflecting back, I never felt the pressure from my grandmas to... They weren't telling me any of that. I was always kind of thinking that. Right. <laughs> so I feel like I have a similar, like a similar story as well, where like I mm -hmm. know yeah, totally. being the favorite child. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I always thought I had to do like, my relationship, my relationship with her was like, oh, well, here's what I want to do to make her proud of me. Right. Uh, and yeah. I like, until my late forties, I was, I was like, oh, like, you know, like I came out and I was like, oh my God, I disappoint her. 
Um, mm-hmm. But towards the end of her life, I spent a lot of time with her. And one of the things like, which changed my relationship with her was like, she just said, I just want you to be happy. And I want you to, I, I just want you to be happy. That's all she said to me. And I was like, yeah. and she was, I don't care about any of these things, all these things that I self-imposed. And yeah. I remember being yeah. like, like well, I feel like that's my biggest gift from her. But then she yeah. said that to me and yeah. I was like, oh my God, what have, what have I been doing for the last 40 years? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Thinking that I want this woman to be proud of me. And she's, she's like, it was such a basic. She's like, I just want you to be happy. And I don't, yeah. none of the rest matters to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did That's you, beautiful. Yeah. Like it, it brings tears. Like it's still like, I'm like, oh my God, like, like I can't, yeah. like I tortured myself for so long about it. <laughs> and that yeah. was all, yeah. you know, like the one person I thought, the one person I associated with love for anything and everything, I still, I put those barriers up with her. Yeah. Yeah. That's such yeah. a weird. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm, I'm listening to it and I think uh, my grandma, um, so after I was married, divorced, and then now with my partner, Richard, um, so welcoming to Richard and we would have lovely visits and um, my, my, my partner's mom had passed away um, tragically actually in an accident in, in Winnipeg. And um, so he lost his mom. So um, my grandma was the same age. So my grandma kind of came a surrogate for him. And uh, it was so nice to see how um, welcoming and we would have beautiful visits and as the three of us and that's a nice memory. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I give that was one of my questions was like, what's your favorite memory with, with her? That one's a beautiful oh. one. If you have another one. Yeah. Um, so just, it was a recent one actually. And um, I have another prop here <laughs> is uh, I will bring that just one moment <laughs> is, um, is nice. Um, so my grandma turned 90 and she was in the uh, nursing home in uh Bangor, Saskatchewan, and um, we thought, let's make it special, you know, let's get letters from the lieutenant governor and the queen and, you know, all the things that you get, your entitlements when you're 90, and um, it turned out that um, the, uh, it was the, the, my grandma was the same age as the queen, <laughs> and your grandma as well, it's so, nice. um, yeah, yeah, so uh, they had in honor of all those people that turned 90 um, two years ago, who, um, the lieutenant governor was giving these awards, and I said, oh, you know what, we're getting this letter recognizing your 90th birthday. Would you mind hand delivering the letter when you come to Bangor? So I went to Saskatchewan in, on July 2nd and was part of this beautiful afternoon tea ceremony with the Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan. And then as a surprise, he singled out her and gave her this letter from the Queen. Oh. And so that was fun. But what part of the top was um, he was wearing a medal and this is the medal here and it was given for those it was a nominations given out in 1992 for those that did a lot of community service work mm-hmm. and so my grandma in back in her room she, she showed me her medal and she said you know a lot of people aren't proud of me for this or she was very shy to show this and and i was kind of shocked for her to share that story because it was like you know some people support you but some people will maybe knock you down kind of thing and um and she was shy to bring it up and i thought whoa this is beautiful and and for all the work she did for her community and service work and to be recognized so um that medal meant a lot to me when she brought it out that day and you know when she passed this is something that i keep because what's really um, speaking in my mind always is to to give back and to be of service right and and um Instead of just taking, it's to give kind of thing. So yeah, so this this is my whole story there. <laughs> oh, I mean, Judy makes my heart like, come on, Judy, I'm so glad. Like, it makes my yeah. heart melt that this is a great story. And I'm like, like I'm and not a lot of people knew that story either. Yeah. Not a lot of people cared about this medal. And it's like, no, I listened and I want to hear it and I love the story and I want to make it continue on yes. your podcast. <laughs> oh my god, like I feel like you should wear that badge all the time on suits as like brooches and be like, oh, my, it's my grandma. Let me tell you about her. Like. What I, will. I always always say when I'm 90, I want to be that way. I want to be doing the things you're doing at 90. You know? I always say, why wait until then, Curtis? You, yeah. like, we're lucky we've got these great role models. We don't have to wait yeah. till that long. Like, yeah. you know, like I was saying, like, I want to be, I, I used to have this big line. I was like, I want to be like you when I grow up. And I was like, wait, actually, I want it now. Because yeah. by the time I get to 90, I want to be, like, it's an honor to take what you've taught me now and be better, right? I feel like every yeah. generation wants to evolve to a better space pass it on so, yeah, yeah yeah so what's your favorite memory 
of my grandmother? Good question. Um, oh my God. I didn't, it's funny how I thought that question for you, but I didn't think about it for myself. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, like, I feel, like, I feel like the loss has been so recent that I'm still in this, like, moment yeah. of, like, I just remember her in these last few days of her life. Um, what I did, again, was, like, I, I recorded her, um, her, her saying prayers. So I have, oh, I'm the only I grandchild that has all these recordings on my phone of her telling us okay. stories about um, when she was a kid. And then her, like, we come from a Muslim Somali community and so religion was very important for her. Um, so, you know, mm -hmm. she, every day she'd be like, great, I have to say my prayers at this time. Like, it's very regimented. Her life was based on a lot of that regiment. Uh, mm -hmm. And as I was thinking of her today, I looked at my phone and I was like, oh my God, I have a recording of her from her saying dua, mm -hmm. what's the prayer, in 2015 yeah. and then one again in 20 like December 2019, which was kind of the last, like her last really, you know, cognizant yeah. points. Uh, but mm -hmm. what I did was, my prop is, oh. so I got her, she used to wear these yellow glasses because she couldn't see color. Like her, she was a really sharp woman, but her, uh, yeah. her, her body was kicking out. So she, at okay. my mom's mom, who died of Alzheimer's, was, it was interesting mm -hmm. to have two grandmas do this, but one grandma lost like her mind was gone, but her body was physical. And this grandma whose body was letting go and her mind was so sharp. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So for me, this is like quintessential my grandmother, like yellow glasses and a hanky. Um, oh, beautiful. Is that with like, the backdrop drop behind yeah, the glasses? Oh, nice. Yeah, very nice. It's, yeah, right. it's a nice. hanky that I found in one of her purses. So, yeah. um, and for me, that like, I feel like my favorite moments were like being, a, I think that, that the story I told you, like being a grown up at 40 and just cutting up with her and saying like, you know, like, and her being like, I love you, and I'm, ha I'm so proud of what you are. And I think as a gay yeah. man who grows up in a religious environment in a very, like, talk masculine, like, you know, we're all these macho men in my family. Um, yeah. It was nice for yeah. me to just be like, I don't care. I love you as you are. Um, yeah. And that shed it, like, I feel like that took away weights, like, decades of weight I was carrying unnecessarily for me. Yeah. 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 That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, the two souls thing um, with um, the connection with Alzheimer's and mental health. Like like my uh, my grandpa John um, had Alzheimer's, and so my grandma was caregiving. And it's interesting to see how um, you know they loved each other so much, and how much burden can be on the caregiver as they're going through that, right? You know, and um, you know, thankfully my, my my grandpa's Alzheimer's. He was, you know, some people could be crying out and yelling and very disoriented. Some are just in their own little world and smiley and that's kind of how my grandpa was um so that was nice um but but yeah i saw the toll that had you know with the alzheimer's so um um i saw how that affected my grandma and then after my grandpa had passed um how sh she was able to kind of start this new chapter in her life and, and, and be involved too kind of thing and so so yeah my grandma had the brain but the, um, the and she was alert to the very end kind of thing but the body was failing yeah that's so that's so amazing. Like, yeah. I feel like, I, I love, know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, like this, you know, when we talk about things, I'm like, of course, like this, like I have this theory that the, you know, like our souls journey the same way, no matter what it is, like, yeah. right. And this, this just adds another layer of connection to us, which is yeah, so nice. Um, yeah. And so we, you know, we talk about like something I think about our grandmas that are also was a resilience. Like my grandpa died mm -hmm. when I was born. So over 40 years ago, mm -hmm. and then she's still mm -hmm. had a, like, out of all her siblings, she was the last, she, it was just her and her younger sister left. Mm -hmm. And she mm -hmm. had this resilience that, you know, like, and a resilience and like an app to like pick up and just go. Like, this has happened great. Like, you know, like, I feel like this days when like, I don't have milk in my coffee and I cry. I'm like, oh, my day is <laughs> over. But like, this woman had yeah. no problem saying, you know, like, I've raised a family, I've done this, I've done this, I've, you know, and I keep going. Yeah. At 92, yeah. she did not want to stop. I think if her body didn't yeah. give up, she would still continue going. Yeah, and it sounds like yeah, your grandma was the yeah. same way. Same thing, actually. Yeah, the resilience is the, the the right word, actually, because you know they were both probably born during the depression era, where they had to be very thrifty and um, and um, yeah, not a lot of money. So um, my grandma became a sewer, and so you know scraps of cloth. So um, my mom's clothes were all hand sewn. I, all my baby pictures up until like junior high are all like 
homemade clothes <laughs> and matchy matchy clothes to my sister you know because so, you were twins <laughs> yeah 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 so but but yeah that sewing that crafting the the crocheting all that stuff um, um and then you know bringing those to craft sales and teas and selling them because it Ooh. was money and so my grandma did all that and then um later she became the um she wrote the local news. So, so-and-so motored to so-and-so and had coffee with so-and-so with their grandchildren. And right. you were paid by the inch how much you wrote in the paper. So there was these long stories of who was doing what. <laughs> and so my grandma was the Dubuque News correspondent. And then she became the correspondent for the nursing homes. And she continued that till just she passed. You know, like she was writing these editorials and for being published in the papers so you can google her name and it'll probably come up as the dubuque news and the four town journal and <laughs> oh my God. But, but but that's that service work you know it was right. very connected to the community but uh, the resilience was um these were all ways to gain income self-serving but not really because it was kind of giving back and doing things you know so yeah <laughs> oh that duty sounds so great like what a <laughs> like what a fun like yeah, it sounds like fun, right? Like there's an art, like there's a creative side to her that she she used as service to give back, uh, yeah. and so selfless. Like, not everyone else did that, so it was kind of neat to go her own path and do yeah. that. <laughs> it sounds like from the metal story, like people didn't even appreciate that, right? Like that, like yeah, like it sounds like she did that, but also those people probably in her life that weren't able to and feel it felt like they had to shame her for it, which. Ugh. Like, so, you know, so, so, you know, to, to dig deeper on that is, you know, I often wonder, um, sometimes, you know, you do things for validation and to be liked. And so I'm, you know, I, I know I do all that and like, um, and that kind of conditional love. So I kind of wonder, oh, you know, was my grandma doing that to kind of fill a void or something? I, I don't know, but, um, but, uh, you know, like sometimes whatever behaviors we learn, um, there are many good things that come out of it, right? So uh, uh, I'm glad that behavior happened. <laughs> yeah. so. What is like if you what What is the one thing that she taught you that you will take to your grave? Oh, um, I you know so this yeah I never thought that's a very good things. question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two things. <laughs> So, you know, one thing she, I, I, I had, she had asked me to do the eulogy for her funeral. And oh. so that was really tough. And um, in the eulogy, she said, I don't want someone to share my born here, did this chronological story. Um, I'd like you to help represent the grandchildren and share memories of their grandma, of you know, what were the memories you had. And um, I, it was an interesting process because I felt guilty not to tell her achievements and accomplishments and things she did. But it was an exercise where all of us grandchildren met and shared our little stories and I weaved it into this eulogy. And I'm thinking, what a beautiful legacy because it's like, you wanna reflect back and remember the good warm fuzzies that you had, right? And, uh, and, and I think that's that whole, um, you know, handing off to the next generation is staying connected to your family family is important but then kind of remembering you know that was a way of kind of us making ourselves remember the good things and, and i thought it's beautiful so i i like that gift of um family importance and thinking of the good things so yeah <laughs> I mean, as somebody else who traveled like you're as so nomadic you've been you're also like i feel like you're very connected to your family like in our conversations our chats you're like oh i just spoke to my, my parents we just spoke to my parents on skype like yeah uh, how's yeah. that it's such a it feels like people like in my head if i'm like oh if i'm a nomadic person i'm not connected to people but you've somehow managed to keep that bridge really well mm, no well so thank you but um, <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. that, that actually i i, I kind of have been that beat to my own drum maybe i had that when i was in vancouver i don't know but um i think um i've been trying to i've been doing a lot of soul searching and, and talking about souls here you know so learning and reconnecting and being with people and family and loved ones so th this is something newer for me and and um it's more of a conscious to do it mm. but um, i'm really finding the rewards to it and i'm glad that i had a role model that showed me what good looks like and you know now we're trying to find ways to do this virtually right <laughs> so 
but so yeah so it's kind of a newer thing and it's a real fun thing to do because it's it's rewarding yeah no, great well from my end i feel like you do a really yeah. good job of it oh, like uh, from an outsider yeah. perspective i would never have get, like it feels like it's so ingrained into who you are that i feel like connecting in family like that's just it, it sounds like it's, it's just feel it felt like it was already part of curtis so it's good to well, know that you know, it's maybe, a work in progress <laughs> well, work in progress but maybe you know i i think that's something that i've did when I was younger. I used to Ukrainian dance and you would be on the mm. stage and you were always taught to smile because if you smile, you look comfortable, everybody's comfortable. But if you're scared and, you know, counting, what am I doing next? Then everybody feels uncomfortable. So I've learned kind of to do the smile and feel comfortable and, and you know, maybe that's the welcoming kind of mm. aspect of things. So the smiley Curtis, yeah. <laughs> Good to know, because I grew up as a dancing kid and there was always yeah. like you, I know, I was, as you said, I was like, of course, does it make sense. Uh, <laughs> you have game face, like we talked right. about, like, right? You're on stage, this is game face. So you're like, yes, eyes and teeth. Eyes yeah, and, teeth. <laughs> and the moment you turn around, you're like, <sighs> and, you turn, and, and then you turn around and you're like, <sighs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's such yeah. a big thing about like you know the public presentation and then you're like yeah. oh, we're on right. camera right we have that uh, commonality of course yeah. we do what <laughs> else we're gonna find funds today <laughs> <laughs> i mean this this whole podcast theory is about that we're all we're journeying the same way so yeah, yeah this makes yeah. sense <laughs> <laughs> It takes a village to raise kids. It takes a village to raise, right. I think, a human being. And I think, I think it's always like, it takes a village to raise a child. But I think it takes, like, it takes a village to raise all of us consistently. Our villages just change and look different. Yeah. But, like, I think it consistently takes a village. And I'm glad that we're currently part of the same village. Because yeah. <laughs> it's going to make this Winnipeg winter better. <laughs> <laughs> and Toronto pandemic That's... better, I hope. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking, because... Um you know, the, the the numbers were low in Winnipeg. So it looked like, yeah, you made the right choice. You know, Toronto was kind of ground zero when it first happened. And, you know, I think we'll be the first and we'll probably be the last of COVID, right. you know. So I thought, good good on you to take a sabbatical mm -hmm. in Winnipeg for a year. But, but yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> for here, things are... It's ground zero here we're, we're now, all right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So by Rehim, Rehim and I talk about this all the time, we're like, we left because we thought we were going to be able to do all this. And then now we're like, okay, okay, we're back to phase one in Winnipeg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's but, where the two souls, you know, we're, we're following a similar journey. <laughs> right, right. I think, it's, which, and that's the exciting part for this year. Like, I feel like in 2020, so many of our souls are following the same way, right? Like, there's, yeah. like, I'm excited to sort of find these people and the virtual helps us to go global. Yeah. So that's it, like, I don't know, like, I know 2020 has been tough for people. We just lost, made this huge matrix in our lives, but a lot of my forward movement in life, like I feel my grandmother around me all the time. Like when I do something, yeah. I'm like, duh. Or I'll see my little nephew do something, I'm like, that looks like grandma. Like yeah. she doesn't, like the physical body is gone, but yeah. there's something that's consistently always around. And that's allowing, yeah. and I feel like that's allowing me to push this forward as well. And, yeah. I don't know if you I, have a similar. Oh yeah, exactly. No, I just made me think my, my grandma loved butterflies. So this, ah. another prop. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I, I um that's kind of like my grandma behind me um in my days but I, I heard 2020 you know like everybody's used to you know projecting out external right. outside activities trips things whatever but 2020 was a year of going inwards and introspective mm. and soul searching <laughs> so uh that's what i'm it's speaking to me you know it's kind of thinking and reflecting and taking stock and looking at what's in your house kind of thing so yeah, yeah. And sometimes that's the worst place to look at because we're so not used to doing it. And then you're like, oh, right. here's all the stuff I didn't clean. Here's all the crap underneath my bed. <laughs> right, right, yeah. And then, but then, you know, it's kind of cool that you can find someone that you can talk about it and be okay with it. <laughs> and, you know, you're, you're, you're in, in our conversations, your authenticity is so great. Like, you know, like you've been so great at just being honest about where it's like life and where you are. And that opens up and allows me to be the same way. And it's, you know... <laughs> Growing up, I feel like I always felt that was the weird part about me, and now I'm so glad yeah. to find a community of people that I'm like, oh, like there's a bunch of us that do this, which is so nice. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and 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 um, that people don't have to be alone and to figure it out themselves. That you have right. friends, allies that are there with you, um, fumbling at the same time, <laughs> and, uh, and and but but it's um, kind of that nice that you're not alone, and, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like you know, this this is Oprah question. Like, what would you tell your younger self? 
Um, oh. Yeah, like I don't, what would you tell younger baby Curtis? So, um, yeah, you know, I, I was, um, I was always holding myself back, um, mm -hmm. watching, waiting, looking, observing. And so, um, uh, last year I had someone close to me die from lung cancer and November is lung cancer awareness month. And, um, at her memorial service, she had a model that she lived by. And this model became my 2020 New Year's mm. resolution model. And it was to uh, focus, be brave, be kind, be grateful, and now go change lives. And each of those things have really struck chords in 2020. But the be brave, I think if I was to tell my younger self was to um, make those bold moves, act on those thoughts versus waiting to be 30 to come out and be gay and, and, and all these things that were holding me back. I wish I admire people that are in their teens and living yeah. their truth. <laughs> um, how would you be bold moving forward? Bold moving forward. How are you going to be bold moving forward? Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so to, to live that exactly. Um, yeah. Just, uh, um, be be comfortable with being uncomfortable so like this yeah exactly <laughs> just yeah. like you know just just do it and know it's not you know it's gonna probably suck but <laughs> you did it right and that that's that's the point <laughs> that's the best gift and timing is amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love that was a great way to end that segment and funny awesome. thing like a really funny thing is like you talk about brave and i was listening to brene brown today early in the morning and she's ah. like the, you know the brave woman but she was talking to dolly parton who yeah. her grandma used to love her. And so it's so funny, I read that and I was I'm like, of course, like the universe is like, Brene Brown, authenticity, braveness, Dolly Parton, grandma. And I was like, yeah, this will duh, makes Dolly sense. Parton's going to save the world with Moderna and the vaccine. <laughs> and she's been doing a great job from the get-go. Like hearing yeah. more about her, I'm like, oh my God, you're so great. Um, yeah. Favorite music of your grandmother? Did she have a favorite singer? Because we're in Dolly Parton, I feel like she just asked. Oh. What, what did Judy love? <laughs> Daniel O'Donnell. Oh. oh, if you Google. I will Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's an Irish crooner, um, and he goes every year, well, Branson, Missouri, there'd be bus trips from Saskatchewan, Manitoba to see Daniel O'Donnell. And for my grandpa and grandma's 40th anniversary, I brought them into Winnipeg, and they got to see Daniel O'Donnell in concert, and we celebrated their anniversary, and it was the trip of their lifetime. And because my grandpa worked in Winnipeg for a while. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that was fun. So, Daniel O'Donnell. Yeah. Yeah, I, will, I will put that in my Yours? Google list. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have a song? I don't know what Play she had. Words. I think it would be like, I think her, she was so religious that for her it'd be like, yeah. like I think to, like, it would be some sort of a Ganon, which is like a hymn. Uh, I don't think yeah. she actually, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think she, yeah, she didn't, I don't think she would understand, like, I don't think she knew who the singers were. She was just like, right. yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Um, my grandmas I, were religious as well too like so she like she was a lay minister and all that so there's a lot of hymns and music like that too <laughs> well, we'll obviously have to do a podcast number two to go oh. in depth into this because uh like we need to more know about judy and roshi Rosh, my grandma was yes. Roshi, so roshi and judy um, okay, great. Right, so in our last minute to wrap up i'm going to give you yep. one word and you're going to give me one word back ready all right okay so curtis The word. Um, oh my God. Because we only have a minute. Come on. <laughs> the <pressure> is on. <laughs> uh, kind. Uh, love. Uh, <laughs> another word back? The, the word is love. Yeah. What's your word back? Oh, oh, like, oh. So sorry, I'll throw you I, a word I, and you throw me a word back that, that you relate to that word. Yeah. Oh, okay. When I hear the word love, I think of um, uh, warmth, light. <laughs> Um, doorway soul uh, sky butterfly oh I think I said grandma <laughs> and when you think Judy 
Oh, I uh, love. Oh, <laughs> well, back to love. <laughs> yeah, I love that it comes back to love. Um, I want to thank everybody for taking time out of their busy day to tune in with Curtis and I as we honor these massive matriarchs in our lives uh, and share all this love. Until next time, bye. bye. <laughs>